Happy Friday, everybody. John here at Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. Hoping you had a great week, and if you uh, are going into a weekend with no work, fantastic. If you're going into a work weekend, sorry, but you know what? At least you're making that money to buy all your favorite hobby items. So what I want to do today is just kind of get a recap of the first five days of Warhammer Fest, because some of them have been really high, some of them have been kind of low, and some of them have been some trolling going on by Games Workshop staff. And I want to go over some of my predictions and see where I was right and where I was wrong. So let's start off with day one. This was on Monday, this was Age of Sigmar. Now I'm not going to listen to their video or their their chatter, nor are we going to go ahead to be watching any of the, the the highlight reels or even the teaser trailers. You've probably already watched it, and I'll leave that up to you. So, as predicted, we're going we were going to be going into the next Broken Realm, so we're right there. What I was wrong about is Kragnos. I thought it was going to be Kuranos. I think that's how you pronounce it. He was the Sylvaneth or original Wood Elves, uh, god of the wild hunt or whatever. And there was a lot of similarities there, except I didn't see the rest of the centaur body until they revealed this. So, um, you know, it's, I want to say I was right in the kind of the physical description, but I really, at the end of the day, I was wrong. I messed up. And it happens. I didn't have a source on this one. I don't remember if I did. I'll check my notes. But it was, I just assumed, like, boom, there you go. The Sylvaneth are getting their dude. I did not expect a brand new character, a actual demigod, that was going to walk the mortal realms. So, it was a bit of a surprise, and it was a welcome one. He is a gorgeous, beautiful model. I don't know if I'll end up getting him, because there's no reason for me to get him, but he's just so good. And I have some friends that uh, play Destruction, for Age of Sigmar, and I'm hoping that maybe one of them will buy him, and I can paint this sucker for him. I'm going to cross my fingers. You know who you are. You know who to call. So, I'm not going to go into the rules and everything. I just want to kind of give a, a highlight, but they did give some very interesting rules. He is going to be very hard to take down, and that's expected. He's a demigod walking the mortal plane, so that's... That's going to be scary to face off against him. And, of course, the book is Kragnos. It's, from what I'm understanding, is that it's the last of the Broken Realms books. Now, does that mean it's the last we'll see for the next year or two? Or ever? Or is it just the last of the Soul War saga? So, if you guys are not familiar, there was Age of Sigmar that came out. And it was Stormcast versus um, Blood guys i can't think of the name of the um the corn faction but it was them those two faced it off then it was stormcast versus the realm of death in the form of the new night haunts which are beautiful beautiful ghosty models and then we've had a couple seasons well a season for each of the chaos gods so we've had corn in the beginning and then i think it went to I believe it was Nurgle. It might have been Zinch next, then Nurgle, and then finally we had Slanesh. So all the Chaos Gods had their cycle. We've had the Realm of Death. Uh, now it's time for the Realm of Destruction. So we're going to be going into a new edition. This is what I want to talk about. Soul Wars was the last edition of the game. And I think this summer, and that might be what we're going to be seeing tomorrow and Saturday is the release of the next edition for Age of Sigmar. Now, is that going to be considered second edition or is it going to be third edition? Because I think technically Soul Wars is second edition, but not. They might not even be t tagging on the name edition to it. They might be going, hey, it's, we're just going to keep renaming it and it's always just going to be Warhammer Age of Sigmar. No necessary edition. It's just, you know, every few years we're going to put out a new box set with revised rule books and so on and so forth. So I think that's what's going to happen, especially as Soul Wars is winding down. So I think we're going to be going into the age of destruction because if you have not noticed, destruction has been getting some really good kits the past couple of years or the past year. So these are the models that are going to be going out for Broken Realms. No idea, but I'm, my guess is near the end of May going into June. So, 
We have Lord Cro Crocs, Croax. I don't know how to pronounce it. Probably Crocs. We have Talon and the voice of Sunesh. Beautiful model. I, I mean, it's the same. Gonna probably likely be the same kit. The one that you're seeing on your screen. That's the one I want. That's the one I'm gonna build at some point. And then the Warcaster Revenant, I believe, for the Sylvaneth. Very beautiful model. The only thing I think I had a problem with is the eggs and the the archway that he's got coming out of his back. I'd prop me personally. I'd probably um, clip all those branches and then green stuff some more branches and maybe even get some um, of the dryad uh, branch wraith mo uh, models extra arms and you know kind of blend it all together so it looks like he has tree branches coming out instead of that thing. But neither here nor there. And then the witch hunters that I guess they're really good at tracking down the endless spell users or um, endless spells. I don't know uh, too much about them just yet, but I was really surprised. I figured they would be going after like vampire. They look like vampire hunters, but I'm wrong. Now, speaking of vampires, we were right about this. So we're kind of, we're two for three right now. Um, we the, the one that we're wrong about so far is who... Uh, Kragnos was going to be. So we met my new waifu, uh, Luak, Laka, Luaka Vi, the mother of nightmares, this gorgeous, gorgeous model. I am in love with this model. There's such wonderful fluidity to it. Um, it's just, it's like a hobbyist dream, at least in my impression. There's so many different textures and features here that I'm looking forward to. And you can also make it into this guy but I'm not interested in him so much. Then we saw Radicar the Beast. I really like this model. Uh, I like the little, his little minions down here below catching the, the uh, blood coming off of his hand. There's, I love the feral kind of feel for it. Cause you really don't see werewolves in Age of Sigmar, even though I believe in the lore they do exist, or at least in old, the old world. So this is the closest we're going to get is basically feral vampires. And then somebody else belonging to the same clan is Belladama Volg, the first of the Virkos. I really like this model. It definitely looks like the old Kislev um, clothing-wise. Love her big wolf and uh, the little wolf. I imagine she is going to be in, in, in unimaginably terrifying in combat. She's probably going to be a spellcaster too, I'm guessing. So then we got the new dire wolves that are really freaking cool. And I, that means that there's more likely going to be a character that says, hey, you could take these as battle line or troops, whatever it's called in Age of Sigmar. I really dig these models. They're really icky, really terrifying, reminding me of the uh, Doberman Pincher Dogs from Resident Evil, the movie and the video games. Um, very scary, very terrifying. So it really looks like this is going to be a very heavy character army. I, I don't have the, the count yet, but I think there's over 10 different character models name, between named and non-named models for this army. So there, I'm hoping there's going to be a window, or not a window, but a uh, War Scroll Battalion that you can take where you're like, hey, here's as many vampires as you can take. Uh, and we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, then they had the video game, the... Uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar, Soul Arena. There's only four factions in it, and it looks like it was one of those auto battle games. We'll see what it's like. We only got a teaser. We really don't know what's going on, but we'll see. Let's get into day two. Day two is Warhammer 40,000, and so far, uh, I've seen mixed feelings about the reviews. I think a lot of people were hoping that, like, Tau or Chaos Space Marines, those sort of things were going to be up next but games workshop already kind of laid things out for us last year so uh, but i think people it's really they get their hopes up or maybe they go to some bad sites that give them some bad um you know oh i've got a friend that works at uh, games workshop which is actually just like the part-timer or maybe even a manager who's just speculating because they're not going to tell you and because they don't even know now i i said that we're probably going to see between the, over the two days, orcs, um, probably admech. Uh, I was hoping for chaos space marines. Um, I can't remember the other thing. I think I said sisters of battle because of the 
we, we knew that there's some more stuff. I'm going to say Sisters of Battle was one of the predictions. I was wrong about Chaos Space Marines. I was right about Orcs. And I was kind of right about Admech. Now, here's where I got right about the Admech is, and I, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So, anyway, Sisters of Battle, we got an high, actual High Lord of Terra. This lady right here is a High Lord of Terra, one of the 12 High Lords. She's taken to the battlefield in her snazzy war suit armor. What's her name? Morven Vall. She looks glorious in that battle suit. That is a beautiful battle suit. It reminds me of, if you ever watched any of the Appleseed, the original cartoons, or the movies, or, or the movies, or even read the mangas, it reminds me of the Landmates. You know, people are like, oh, they're baby carriers, but this reminds me of the Landmates armor. I think it's, that's what they're called. Um, very awesome looking. The art, it is so well done. Looking at all the different... Uh, uh, works of uh, basically works of art into the shaft of her spear, the spearhead, her shoulder, her pauldron guards. Everything is like they took a lot of time doing all the detail in this. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, the other thing we got was the found out that the new standard bearer is going to be a named standard bearer, a battle standard bearer for the Sisters of Battle, and she's going to be accompanied by an old woman uh, that's also named. So it'll be interesting to see what their rules are like. Um, another new character I did not, I, I think I expected it, but I didn't think it was going to be an actual new type of, uh, character, like a new, uh, HQ choice, but basically it's their version of a chaplain, uh, or their, the Adeptus Sordis, uh, priest, priestess, I guess they're called Dogmata. So that's going to be really cool to see that in action. We had the new Palatine model that came in the piety and pain box or pain and piety however that was and we knew that she was going to go on sale so no uh, individually we knew that so no big surprise there and then with this we get to see that the celestian sacrosants uh, are going to be a close combat unit with shields and big giant maces and with the, also they can have the shields they're basically i think they're going to be ruled as combat shields which is probably just going to give them like um, a plus one to their armor save and maybe a plus one of their their invulnerable save i i don't know because i think i think combat shields in the past were like a five up or a six up who knows what they're going to be and then they're also the same ones that can have the big halberds so it'll be interesting to see what they can do but they're going to be obviously a close combat unit as a bodyguard and speaking of bodyguards the paragon war suits that we thought was just going to be oh that's just going to be a new hq choice ended up being a squad and it's going to be really fun i think to see a squad even if it's just three um i think it would probably be three to six but three to six of these on the battlefield with that uh that new high lord of terra that's going to be i think really awesome because these things are decked out for close combat for uh, tanking basically and heavy weapons all over the place i think that's going to be a terrifying unit if done right uh, then we got to see, again, the Castigator. That's basically just a repurposed um, Predator, but in the same vein as the Sisters of Battle, which makes me wonder, it's like, hey, Space Marines, since you're going all over to grab stuff, can we just go ahead and get your Predators and just give them to the Sisters of Battle? Like, yeah, sure, we don't need these anymore. We got all of our new snazzy grab stuff. I feel like that's what's happening. They're emptying their armories for them. I mean, I could be wrong, obviously. So we knew a Sisters of Battle book. Here's the, the bone of contention a lot of people have. And this is where I believe that we're going to start seeing the ramp up for chaos soon. Uh, Warzone uh, Caradon is, this is the second book. I think it's is it just uh, the Book of Fire. People are upset because it's like, hey, Games Workshop, you said that we weren't going to be overwhelmed. Supposedly, they said we weren't going to be overwhelmed with supplements. And here we are now, two supplements already this year. And there's so many codexes that need to be released. It's like, come on, guys. But, you know, we're, we'll take it. And we'll get the the um, the funky war, or whatever the special battalions or legendary battalions or whatever they're calling them in here. Um, are and that's going to be really I think that's the other bone of contention it's like we know Adeptus Mechanicus is just right around the corner that's why we didn't really see any previews and 
I think the first Warzone Caradon and then this book, it sounds like, are going to have new Adeptus Mechanicus rules in it. And it's like, why are you selling us new rules when they're you're going to just turn around in like a month or two, give us a new codex? You know, you're you're at, a lot of people are. That's the second thing people are upset about is like you're just doing a money grab, just like the Psychic Awakening. It's like, come on, man. But they're going to buy it anyways because they want their they want their goodies and they want it now. It, but they're going to just pay for that premium content they're going to get later, probably, probably. So the reason why I said chaos is um, demons will well, be, I think chaos space Marines. And I think we're going to go into like the season of corn um, and not just because we got corn in the background there, but I think it's just, it's time. They've been building up for um, chaos in the background. Very, very slowly. Nurgle's had his run. He's had his run. Pretty much through entire eighth edition with a dash of Zinch in there, but really, uh, Nurgle's been at the forefront. So we're gonna get the rules for Bellacore, but I think now I don't think we're gonna get too much Chaos Space Marine rules in this book. But this is basically the the ignition. It's the flame to kick off the the massive explosion that we're gonna get with Corn and probably Slanesh in there, I think near the end of uh, maybe next or sometime about this time next year, who knows? But I think corn uh, is right around the corner. We'll probably get chaos demons first and then chaos space Marines is my bet. Actually, that is my prediction. We'll get chaos or chaos demons released prior to chaos space Marines. And then I think Chaos Space Brains will be launched with at least one new um, book. We might even see it as a supplement, but I'm hoping it's not. I think we're going to see the World Eaters uh, within the next year, and hopefully by the end, before the end of this year, but within the next year or, and or um, the Emperor's Children. I'm really laying odds on World Eaters be, uh, coming first, but we'll see. We'll see. And then the other thing we saw was uh, just a... Uh, a repackaging of a bunch of terrain since terrain does not sell as well as some people think. Um, the, the terrain, Games Workshop has gorgeous terrain, but it's it's garbage for when, when you're playing um, like a match play. It doesn't provide much cover. It's very, very beautiful. And I mean, it, it's, it's great, but you know, a lot of people, a lot of stores, are not going to buy this terrain and set it up. And that's where a lot of people play. So these don't sell too well, but people will still buy them. But, you know, it's, it's easier to get some MDF laser cut, um, you know, wood boards that you can sit there, or, uh, buildings that you can put together really quick, put a, uh, spray some paint on it and dry brush it. And bam, you've got plenty of line of sight blocking terrain. And that's one of the biggest things that, People, at least in Warhammer 40,000, terrain is a massive, massive thing that's got to be in the game. I think Age of Sigmar, you can get by without a lot of terrain, but in Warhammer 40,000, you need it. And Games Workshop's gorgeous terrain just does not make muster. All right, moving on. Let's get to day three because I'm lagging behind by about three minutes here. So it's Black Library Day. I missed um, this until like later on in the evening. I was really surprised that almost this entire thing is centered around the Sabbat worlds, uh, the Sabbat Crusade. And uh, I, I really kicked myself for missing it because I would have been so super excited. Now, we got to see Gaunt's Ghost. If you're not familiar, it is probably the best war novels that Games Workshop has really put out because you follow the Gaunt's Ghosts, the Tanith first and only, from their inception. All the well, all the way till now, <laughs> and you fall in love with these characters, and you see them rise, you see them fall, you will cry when some of these characters um, go through some of these hardships, and you just get really attached to Gaunt's ghosts, and I mean, you feel like you're a part of them, you feel like you're a part of that. Well, I want to say family, um, not like Fast and Furious family, but more like you're a part of that unit, like Band of Brothers. If you watch Band of Brothers or the Pacific TV shows that were on HBO, this is how it feels. And because this is the 
easiest way that you can connect with the Warhammer 40,000 universe because you are human just like them. And that's why I think you know, a lot of people are like, oh, the first movie is going to be Horace Heresy movies or it's going to be Space Marine movies. I think the first movies or TV shows is going to be human centered because that is how we are can connect. That's how the audience can connect with the universe. We have to see it through human eyes. And yes, Space Marines are transhuman and or human or transhuman, whatever, but they are not human. They are superhuman. So I, I still am adamant that the first thing we're going to see is like the Inquisitor TV show, probably on Amazon. And then I, I would imagine we're going to see something from a guardsman perspective. And if that ever, if that ever comes, that's live action, guys, not any of the animation. The animation, you can get away with a lot. All right, I'm going to move on because I'm just dragging on. Anyways, this is the, actually, this is the third time these models have come out. The first time they came out via Black Library back in the early 2000s, and they were like a little collector saying it had like one or two models. And then they came out with another set that was really good. Um, and then they had more models, and I think it was like a full 10-man squad, but it was all the, like the named characters. So we got, um, of course, we have Commissar Gaunt. Love him. Uh, Colm Corbeck. Mm, such a badass. And I love the details that they put in the wood, the null wood which you, you'll learn about, and their Tanith straight silver blades that they've got there as their bayonets. I mean, they've really paid attention to details here. Here's the asshole Major Ronnie. Oh, God, I hate that guy. But I love him too. Uh, Master Sniper Larkin or Mad Larkin. It it fits. It, it does fit. And then <laughs> try again, brag. Love it. Um, that This makes sense. And then, of course, Sergeant Scout... Owen McCall. McCall is the man. Let me tell you what. He is he is a badass. He makes uh, Sly Marbo look like a <clears throat> look like a recruit. We're gonna go with that route. Anyways, so they're gonna be coming out alongside um, the v Vincula, I think that's what it's pronounced, Insurgency, which is the next book in the Gaunt's Ghost. Uh, Tan Tanith First and Only series. Now they're going to have a special tin or a special um, set that's going to come out with the book, Regimental, and it's going to have a bunch of other little knickknacks that you can get here. Um, all sort. Oh, they got even, man, I might have to get this. They even got like a little um, scout pad. I mean, they got so much cool stuff. I love cool stuff like that. That's going to be coming out. And then uh, let's see here Sabat World Anthology. That'll be fun to read. Um, the Sabat Worlds is a massive, massive series of books, guys. There's many books out there about it. It's one of the biggest crusades. They got another book that's going to be coming out. I think this is just a really an art. Let's, let me scroll back up. Um, oh, oh, it's just it's actually the novel, and then it's going to come with all sorts of snazziness in it, which is really cool. I love those look like challenge coins. God dang, you guys are just robbing me blind here. Um, I got really excited about this, the Erdesh, the Serpent and the Saint. At first, I was excited because I was like, yes, Iron Snakes. We get to see Primaris Iron Snakes. And then I read, I, I saw the title, Erdesh, and that's another Sabat world. And that's where they have a, a famous conflict where um, the, a small contingent of Iron Snakes battle it out. And for like nine or ten days with little to no ammunition, hold off uh, the forces of chaos. Enough that... A couple chapters and regiments, uh, Space Marine chapters and reg Imperial Guard regiments, like take a knee and basically bow down to them when they're walking by. Like, holy sh! These guys are bad mofos, you know. Let and they're a second founding chapter, by the way, of the Ultramarines. That's how long they've been around. All right, enough of that. There's going to be a bookmark. Those are cool. I'm going to pass over that. Um, the Blue Bloods novel for the Vulpine. Guard, uh, this one's Vulpine Glory. Once you read, start reading the Gaunt's Ghost no novels, you'll know why I kind of roll my eyes with these jerks. But there's going to be a novel for them. And the next in the Siege of Terra series, Warhawk, which looks like it's Mortarian, and uh, Jakati Khan facing off. So White Scars versus Death Guard. That'll be interesting. What a weird combo. I'm going to be really excited to see what this conflict is going to be like. Uh, then our, we're going to, they're going to continue on with their crime novels. So we got Broken City 
and sanctions and sin, which kind of to me right now is looking like it might be. Oh, it's an anthology. For a second there, I thought this was going to be another Jer um, um, Cal Jericho. Uh, Grim Repast looks like it's going to be a fantasy novel. So there's a lot of good books that are coming out. We get to see the uh, Trader, uh, or not Trader Rock, but more of a uh, uh, Minka Lesk running around if you've been following her in any of the Warhammer 40,000 and the, like the Plague War series and such. We get to see more of her. Uh, the Twice Dead King Ruin. I don't know anything about this, but hey, we're getting some cool stuff heading this way. Um, let's see here. All right, we're going to move on because we are still, we are, man, we're behind schedule. I apologize. So day four, um, here's where my predictions got a little wrong. This is supposed to be the box games. Um, I figured it was going to be um, Warhammer Underworlds, I, and, and Necromunda. I did not think about, I totally forgot about Aeronautica Imperialis. And I was praying it wasn't Adeptus my, uh, Mechanicus. I assumed we would see a new box game for Warhammer 40,000 and some Cursed City. The Cursed City, I was definitely wrong about. Uh, and afterwards that I made that prediction, I, I was talking to a friend. He's like, hey, dude, by the way, they, they already said that they're not doing anything else for Cursed City. And I was like, oh, God, I'm an ass. So sorry about that. So let's get into Dire Chasm. Uh, some people are going to be excited because the... Uh, the Ideneth Deepkin are getting a warband, and it's cool. That's new models that you get to add to your Ideneth Deepkin army. You're, or now you can use them in uh, Warhammer Underworlds, or you can use them over at Warcry. So, really cool. They got some good looking models here. They got uh, some leader with a, looks like a, a bill hook and a net, and he's got that little soul gem thing or lantern that sucks up the soul of the people that they kill. Comes with a, looks like a flying lionfish. So it's probably got poison of some sort. And then this giant crab. And then, of course, uh, one of the reavers. They're the blind guys. They're like the thralls. And I forget what they call the, the normal warriors that aren't in, enslaved thralls. But she looks pretty fierce with a sword and board. It looks impressive. Uh, we also got to take a look at the, we, I totally forgot about them, but House Deloc of Necromunda is getting their, their book, which is basically their army book. It should be around $40, plus their upgrade kit with all sorts of probably the most bizarre things I've ever seen Games Workshop do for the 40K universe. Um, these new models are really out there, but I'm digging them. There's some potential there. And I'm, I'm looking forward to diving into conversion possibilities. We also have Hired Gun. That's going to be a video game coming out. It looks like it was a first-person shooter for Necromunda where you take on the role of a bounty hunter. And there's lots of upgrades and options that you can do along the way, including getting a Cyber Mastiff. Who doesn't want a dog to run around with them? A loyal hound when you're chasing down ganger scum in the Necromunda Hive. It's pretty exciting. I'm not going to lie. And then they did the troll video. <laughs> they they really built it up. And everybody thought they were doing plastic Thunderhawk. And I'm, I'm looking at that model. I'm like, okay, well, we got Thunderhawk coming. The little images. And then there's just some, some parts of it. Because I have two Thunderhawks right now. Well, one's actually... No, I got... No, I have one now in my house. Because the other one I sold. So all I have is the last one for my Iron Snakes. And I looked at it, and I looked as they were doing that model, and I was like, uh, "This isn't right." That, and then of course, they picked it up, and it was a for Aeronautic Imperialis. So Wrath of Angels is going to be their next uh, edition. So that means you're going to have like souped up rules or fixed up rules for Aeronautic Imperialis, plus two new factions that, and everything is compatible with the earlier boxes. So you don't have to get this unless you want Eldar or Aldari and Space Marines, or either or. So you're getting some Xiphon Fighters, uh, a couple Storm, e yeah, those are Storm Eagles, and for the, um, oh man, what are these, Phoenix Bombers, and I forget what these fly, the, the attack fighters are for the Aldari. Maybe it'll tell us here in a second. And of course, the massive Thunderhawk, and it looks good. It looks good. 
I might just buy it just cause. So that was really cool. I mean, I was right about some stuff, wrong about the others. Now let's get into day five and we're gonna wrap this up with tomorrow's predictions. So day five was, uh, the well that was today, it was the rest of the Warhammer 40,000 previews. Well, uh, unless tomorrow has some. So we got to see the, the, uh, the first of the orcs coming out for Warhammer 40,000. And let me, I'll stress that, the first of the orcs. So Beast Snaga orcs. It's going to be an army set, 26 miniatures. My guess is this is going to be around $120 to $160. Uh, this is going to be an army box. And it comes with, uh, let's see here, two, four, uh, so five, 10, 15, 20, looks like 20 orc boys, one character. Maybe more than one character. Nope. Um, looks like 20 orc boys, and there might be a, a, a knob or two in there. And uh, some of the Beast Snaga Riders, I think that's what they're called, plus a war boss, and then there's a named character. Um, so let's take a look at the knob. He's uh, got massive bionics. He's got a big old chain axe or something on his back. He's got this big, brutal two-legged squig with a metal plate on its head that just looks like it means business. He's, they got wonderful cybernetics. And this is kind of like, I think this is their new take on, even though they're not going to be snake bites anymore, or these aren't snake bites, but these guys are basically the snake bites of old. If you remember, probably back from third or fourth edition, the snake bites could take squig, right? Uh, well, at that time it was... Um, Boar, they were boar boys, so they could ride giant boars and trick them out with cybernetics. They had a lot of cybernetics, but now we had the beast snagas. So we have Zodgrod Wart Snaga, which we haven't seen since I think second or third edition, or at least a mention of him since then. And his model looks absolutely bonkers, crazy, amazing. Big crab or big power claw um, attached to basically it's his rot hurt or grot herder pole. Uh, looks like a custom um, shooter with probably some poison uh, syringe type shooter right there. He's got all sorts of hooks and his hair is the most glorious hair I've ever seen on an orc. It is so awesome. His beard is nothing to, to, to uh, sneeze at either. And even they got this great little, and it's a really an ode to or a, a callback to what I was talking about, the third or fourth edition orcs where you'd have some orcs and squigs, or I guess boar boys at that, or boars at that time with mono wheels or tracks. So you got this snotling with his little shiv. It's actually, it looks like a, an, uh, um, a railroad spike. And he's riding a squig that's, it, that doesn't have its legs and it's all attached to a mono wheel. So really super exciting about this. And it is gonna be an orc codex. Now here's the thing. Let me scroll back up here. Um, See if I can find it. Oh, maybe I haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, best of all, these models, and this is, I'm quoting verbatim, best of all, these models we've shown offer only half of the green, stiff, green skin reinforcements you'll be seeing this year. So orcs are probably going to be a little off. Probably, might, I'm, I wonder if they're going to try to pull off an actual Orktober for once. Um, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye out. But they got a brand new badass war boss because... If you're not familiar, that there's no war boss um, in Mega Armor kit that's plastic that's out there, and so they've got this amazing one with the Gretchen on the back that's kind of looks like a, a big shooter. Man, this guy looks brutal. He looks amazing. Just what I would expect. All these orcs right now, as I'm scrolling back up, it is exactly what I expected that we would get a very brutal, muscular, very uh, a much better kit than what we have right now with the boys. And I know I've argued with some people back and forth, even providing proof that the orc boys have been around since the, the, since the nineties. And yes, or the orc boys got an upgrade kit, but it's still the same mono. It's the same pose over and over again, just repackaged. And the fact that we're getting these very dynamic looking, very, very brutal, much larger orc boys. And uh, uh, God, this is awesome. You Orc players, you guys are, you should be super ecstatic right now. Now, one thing I did not expect, well, I kind of did. I, so I guess I did call this, that we were going to see new um, 
new Astra Militarum or Imperial Guard kits for their infantry at least. And w we are, we are, but it's coming in the form of, looks like you're getting 20, it's going to be, looks like you're going to get 20 helmets or 20 heads, sorry, or 25 heads, sorry. And the kit will also come with um, stuff for special weapons and some sergeant upgrades, which really was a surprise to me. I, now, I don't know if this is going to be a separate kit. Is this all? Is this just now going to be repackaged with the Cadians? What's going to happen? I don't know. But I'm super excited about this. That's awesome. That's awesome they did that. And then they had a preview. You could tell easily, and even in the description, that there's something coming down the line for Chaos Demons, as I was talking about just a bit ago, and the uh, Grey Knights. So there's, uh, I forget what it was called. I don't want to start the, the video, but basically... Maybe it's Faith and Fury. I don't know. Faith and Fire. But Grey Knights and Demons are going to be facing off probably between now and second quarter, which is the June, July, August. So um, my bet is September, October, November time frame. We'll see this box set roll out. So expect probably a new or a, maybe even a Primaris version of uh, the the Grey Knights. Oh, God, I don't know. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? And then all sorts of new demon stuff. Probably even some Thousand Suns because it looked like there's some Zinch tossed in there. So who who knows we'll, what we'll see. So that is a recap of what we got all week long. Let me see if I... Well, you know, I'm just going to keep it right here on the be snagged boys because that is such an awesome image. So let's talk about tomorrow's predictions. And this will be the final thing. And you guys can stop listening to me yammer away while you're driving at, uh, home from work or if you're maybe even on the road and you want to get back to some music. So before this prediction, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. If you're here on Havoc Maker Studio and you've already hit the subscribe button, fantastic. Thank you so much. We are almost at 100 followers and I can start doing giveaways here. If you're already here, head on over to FMP Wargamers. That link is down below in the description and give it a subscribe there. Once we get to 3,000 followers there, I'm going to do another giveaway. And if you're on FMP Wargamers, follow the link, head on over to Havoc Maker Studio, hit that subscribe button, and you're automatically entered. If you guys get a chance, leave a like and a comment. I mean, if you have to give a thumbs down, cool, I get it. But at least give me a comment to maybe why. That would be awesome. So here's my predictions for Saturday's big reveal. First, let me poop on somebody's parade. I don't think it's going to be plastic horse heresy. I, uh, my, my, even my unreliable sources are like, yeah, there's, there, there's just not doing anything for, for that. Forge World has been moving towards specialist games. They've been wrapping up everything for, the Horus Heresy. Now, does that mean we're not going to be getting any models from Horus Heresy? No, because we're still going to be getting models, but it's going to trickle in like it has been, and we're probably going to get signs of the next book. That could be tomorrow. Now, is it impossible? Is it impossible? No, it is still possible. It is just highly improbable that they're going to take the entire Horus Heresy range over at, um, at Forge World and turn it into plastic. If you guys have not noticed, they have been slowly getting rid of the all the firstborn Marines. That's, I guess, the original Marines, the best way to describe it, and moving over to Primaris. And my prediction years ago was that within five to ten years, we were going to see a complete overhaul of the Space Marines, and the firstborn are going to go away, and everything that the Primaris needs to, for being an army is going to be there. Well, we're there, guys. We have everything we need to be running Primaris Marines and all the firstborn are on their way out. We're still about, I think, uh, let's see, 2018, we're, what, three years now. We're still about two more years away, I would say, before we start seeing Space Marines move to web store only. I would say within the next two years, we're going to see that slowly but surely web store only models. And then uh, with the next edition... I think this next edition, it could be the one after that, but the next edition after ninth, whatever that ends up being at whatever time, which hopefully three years from now, we will, it'll be, that's it. There's no more of those firstborn space Marines. 
they're going to trickle them down. They're going away. So that does not make sense for them to go, hey, let's bring all this firstborn space marine stuff over into the plastic line and spend all these hundreds of thousands of dollars on these die cast molds to make them plastic. There, it's just, it's the money's not there. Now, or the, the, the popularity is not there. Now, that doesn't, not, I'm not negating your love for it or that it is popular, but between Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40,000, everything else, it's basically the minority of their sales. Now, could they do it? Yeah. Will they? Very, very unlikely. So what is my prediction? I have no idea. <laughs> no, seriously though, I this, my sources cannot confirm or deny anything. So my speculation right now is going to be, we're going to see first a little bit of a teaser for Age of Sigmar for their next edition. That is my first big, um, my, my big prediction for tomorrow is that we're going to see that. Then we're going to see something in regards to the release of all the animated anthology. And I think we're going to see something about the TV show in development, which I believe if sources were right is the Eisenhorn TV show. Now that that's been in development since 2000, 18 or 19? I want to say 2018 or 19. So that could be that. Now, I think we're going to see a new boxed game of some sort. I don't know what for what brand. This It could be the Old World. It could be a Return to the Old World. That is another one. That's another Warhammer Fantasy Battles. That's another one of my predictions. I'm kind of throwing a lot out there. and I'm, Something's going to stick. I realize that. But... I don't think horse heresy and the only other thing I'm thinking is that we are going to see some, maybe one more Primark teased for either horse heresy or, and, or Warhammer 40,000. So those are my predictions. We'll see tomorrow. And you know what, if I'm wrong, jump back on this video later on uh, tomorrow and go, Haha, John, you were wrong about this, 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 and this, but did you see all the amazing stuff? And I'll be like, yes, I did. That was amazing. You're right. I was wrong, but oh my God, <laughs> look at all that cool stuff. And I think that's going to be it. So you guys have yourself a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Please be safe. Uh, follow all the directions still to be safe. I know man, we're almost out of this whole pandemic. We're kind of almost in the post pandemic, uh, era so just still be safe. We're almost through it. And we can get back to playing games and hobbying together and chilling out and geeking out over all the cool stuff. So my name is John. This is Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. I'll talk to you guys later. See you all.